good afternoon or uh, good morning, depending on where you are on the planet. Uh, and thank you very much uh, to join uh, this uh, webinar. So the webinar today is the fourth of this uh, series of webinars, and it's, uh, it relates to insect farming and uh, feed production. Uh, we talk about global trends, benefits, sustainability, and uh, a very important case study. So here we are today. Uh, I, uh, let me introduce our uh, guest, uh, Mehdi Val Raven from uh, uh, InnovaFeed. May is uh, Head of Business Development at InnovaFeed, a French company. We know much more at the end of the presentation with their uh, uh, presentation. And uh, here with me is uh, our outreach uh, uh, manager for the areas of uh, France, uh, German-speaking countries, and Asia, Massimo Bardella, who has been the liaison uh, uh, between uh, Friend of the Sea, Friend of the Earth, uh, and uh, InnovaFeed. And uh, I am director of uh, uh, the uh, World Sustainability Organization and of the two projects, uh, uh, Friend of the Sea and Friend of the Earth. Uh, Friend of the Sea is a project focused on certification of products from sustainable fisheries and aquaculture, while Friend of the Sea certifies products from sustainable agriculture and farming. Over 1,000 companies around the globe uh, have uh, products uh, certified uh, Friend of the Sea or Friend of the Earth. Let's start uh, with uh, an outlook on uh, insect conservation status. And unfortunately, the news coming to us on, uh, uh, from this uh, recent uh, study of 2019 uh, are not uh, so positive, uh, actually are quite negative. In fact, uh, a good part of the insect families that we know have been uh, reduced uh, in their populations uh, up to and more than uh, 50%. So this is a, a very important issue. In fact, we all know that uh, uh, insects are very important in the food chain uh, for all other animals, uh, uh, birds, reptiles, and in the end also humans. So a friend of the sea, a friend of the earth in particular, have developed uh, in the past years, a conservation project uh, uh, to, to try and save uh, uh, Italian endangered butterflies. And uh, this basically has consisted in uh, uh, ex situ reproduction of endangered uh, butterflies to be then introduced uh, in uh, controlled uh, areas, uh, parks and reserves. And uh, this has involved also uh, citizen science uh, uh, with uh, citizens uh, carrying out a census of Italian butterflies. We would really love uh, to uh, develop further this uh, project uh, and uh, we are looking uh, for uh, sponsors and companies to support the project in the future. But that, let's get down to the focus of uh, today's uh, presentation uh, and let's analyze together uh, some data regarding the uh, uh, global edible insect market, its size and trends, applications and uses. So if we look at the global uh, uh, market uh, of insect-based ingredients, uh, which includes also honey production and silk, uh, which, which uh, play a major part in this, uh, in this field, uh, we see that it's a growing uh, market uh, which has reached about uh, 11 billion uh, uh, US dollars in value. And more specifically today, we will look at the two uh, fields which are uh, circled here on the slide. Um, so the production of uh, protein for uh, human consumption and the uh, animal feed market. Uh, and uh, something curious, uh, uh, apparently, uh, also the part of the global population, uh, those five billion people who normally don't eat insects, uh, involuntarily uh, over the year uh, eat up to one kilogram of insects. These are found uh, 
either on some of the foods we eat or uh, we just uh, eat them uh, casually. But uh, as we all know, there are some countries and some continents, uh, in particular Asia, Africa, and South America, and Latin America in general, where uh, several uh, uh, countries uh, normally uh, eat insects, as you can see from this uh, image. And uh, up to 2 billion people consume uh, insects uh, regularly in their life. And uh, here you can see some of the major uh, uh, families of insects uh, which are uh, consumed. Uh, the major one, uh, the one that plays a major role is the beetles family, uh, then caterpillars, bees, wasps, and ants. About 1,900 species are eaten worldwide. And the attitudes of consumers globally towards, uh, um, towards eating insects uh, and uh, their uh, health impact uh, uh, are uh, diverse. Uh, but obviously, there is a good part which hasn't uh, yet experienced uh, eating uh, insects. And uh, in uh, some cases, uh, uh, people have a positive attitude. So this means that with uh, appropriate uh, communication uh, in regard uh, in the future, uh, it is uh, possible that the consumers will uh, have a positive attitude uh, toward uh, eating insects. Uh, in this regard, uh, I would like to uh, uh, propose to you uh, a poll uh, that we have prepared a question that you can answer to, and I'll start it right now. And the question is, uh, have you ever eaten insects or products from uh, farm insects? Feel free to answer during the presentation. <coughs> okay, so uh, if you want to continue the presentation, you have to answer and submit. Okay. So now we proceed, and uh, let me just, uh, sorry, I have some technical problems. Okay, I'll have to close this and open up uh, again. Here we are. So um, I will let now uh, Massimo tell us a bit more about uh, the uh, global edible insect market. <coughs> Massimo, please. So, uh, thank you, Paolo. In terms of uh, market value, currently uh, Asia Pacific uh, represents one third, followed by Latin America and North America. The market is basically expected to triple in the next five years, as you may see from the schedule, and from current uh, uh, 400 million US dollars to 1 billion and 200 million dollars in 2023. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, major, uh, major categories of edible insects uh, products are in order uh, of importance uh, flour, protein bars, and snacks, as you may see. Uh, the edible uh, market is growing, uh, and Sainsbury has been the first retailer in Europe uh, in 2018. Uh, to launch an edible uh, insect range of products. Uh, also, the pet food industry has become more and more, uh, always more available and interesting for this kind of market. And in fact, a quarter of meat uh, and fish globally with a consequent environmental impact can be reduced by using uh, alternative uh, protein source, as in this case. Uh, the global insect feed uh, is currently approximately valued one billion US dollars uh, at the moment, while official market share data is not available. Uh, the major target uh, uh, is uh, predominantly aquaculture, uh, but followed by poultry and pet food. Feed composition has changed over the years, as you may see from the schedule, the, bot, uh, the above part, uh, over the years, with plant proteins substituting 
fish meal and the oil. Uh, now composing uh, now approximately 4% of this. Each of them has pros and cons. According to a recent study, uh, insect feed has potential to replace uh, between 10% and 50% of soy milk feed used in poultry and uh, cattle application at the moment. I put you through the power once again. So the as far as uh, the legislative developments uh, are concerned, we see uh, three uh, major legal trends. So there are countries like uh, UK, USA, Canada, New Zealand and Australia where uh, edible insects do not represent a novel food. And so these have not implement, implemented specific legislation for uh, edible insects. The European Union instead has has the need to introduce uh, uh, rules, regulations, and uh, provide approval before allowing any marketing. And then there are uh, non-Western countries, Asia, Africa, where these insects are often a traditional food, but rarely uh, packaged with the brand or exported. So there isn't really uh, any regulation, any specific regulations on these. Uh, so if we look at the EU law applicable to insect farming, uh, uh, there, there is a number of uh, laws and regulations, the first three that you see here listed, uh, which uh, uh, also include uh, 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 reference uh, uh, to, um, uh, to insect uh, uh, production, uh, but the generic uh, laws uh, uh, for hygiene, health, uh, uh, are applied. Uh, in uh, January 2018, however, a, a, a new uh, novel uh, food law has been uh, introduced. And uh, um, <coughs> um, uh, Innova, Innova Feed will tell us a, a bit more also about this uh, specifically. But uh, summing up uh, here, um, insect uh, uh, derived uh, proteins can uh, are today not allowed uh, for use in uh, pig and uh, poultry feed, whereas uh, pet food, for example, uh, pet food for dogs, cats, birds, and reptiles, and uh, farm animals uh, may well be fed with such products. Uh, it should be noted that the, the uh, feed ban does not apply to all insects, as you can see from the, from the slide, uh, nor to insect-derived fats. If we look at the environmental uh, impacts of, uh, of insect feed uh, production, uh, we have to consider all the different uh, steps of the production, as one normally does for any uh, environmental impact, and uh, here we can uh, see that there are some uh, specific uh, potential impacts, uh, such as, for example, uh, the risk of uh, uh, invasive uh, species being uh, spread in the environment. However, uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, these uh, potential impacts uh, of uh, insect uh, production uh, can be more easily resolved when uh, compared uh, to farming of uh, other species for meat. And uh, if uh, all, all studies agree that uh, the environmental impact of insect farming is lower than uh, the impact of uh, farming other animals, for example, cow, uh, one should take into consideration, for example, that uh, um, uh, insects uh, have a higher value in percentage uh, in, in terms of uh, protein and uh, lower fat content. And, and uh, uh, adding up to that, uh, um, the farming of the equivalent uh, uh, weight of meat uh, um, <coughs> would uh, imply 2,000 times more water, 25 times more feed, and 100 times more uh, uh, greenhouse gases emissions. So obviously, there is a, a benefit for the environment. And friend of this is why uh, in an optic to, uh, in an outlook to uh, promote uh, products uh, um, coming uh, from insect farming, uh, 
a friend of the sea, a friend of the earth, that we introduced uh, a year ago uh, requirements for sustainable insect farming, which are here summarized, but of course uh, we will send you a link uh, to the actual uh, requirements and checklist uh, for your uh, further review. And uh, they are structured with uh, the following categories uh, and covering the following potential impacts. So there are requirements for both environmental and social impacts, uh, use of hazardous substances, for example, uh, welfare of the animal, uh, water resources, air resources, waste management, energy management, as well as social accountability. The first company which has been uh, certified uh, friend of the sea for insect farming is InnovaFeed. So I pass the uh, word and the presentation to uh, InnovaFeed uh, for uh, uh, providing us an outlook on their experience, uh, on their uh, the potential of their production, and. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Massimo. Um, so at Innovafeed, we have decided uh, to invest in insects, to replace it in its uh, natural spot in nature, meaning that uh, we're exploiting its ability to feed on low-value biomass and using it as high-quality ingredients uh, to feed animals. So in nature, a lot of small animals like piglets, poultry, even fish, feed on insects, and we decided uh, to deploy a new industry to uh, create those knowable ingredients. Um, so at University, we actually uh, cover several steps of the value chain. We formulate the seeds for the insects ourselves. We cover the breeding, the reproduction of the insects, as well as the final transformation into two types of protein products, uh, firstly a protein uh, made of the insect as well as a oil um, made of the insect, which we commercialize uh, for aquaculture as well as agricultural and uh, to some extent on uh, the pet food market. We have decided uh, to focus most of our efforts on aquaculture because uh, due to the tremendous growth of uh, this sector in the past couple of years, a new challenge has emerged, which is the supply of high quality proteins to feed fish. And like a lot of uh, other animals that are traditionally farmed, fish are carnivorous. Um, and as a result, they need high quality uh, protein. While uh, fish meal and soy meal have been premium uh, ingredients that have supported the growth of agriculture so far, they both have their limitations and uh, therefore the industry has been looking for new uh, alternative ingredients and insects can be one of these solutions. So Innovative has over the past couple of years uh, validated the potential of a specific species called Hermesia innocens, also referred to as the black soldier fly, um, to test its nutritional quality and ensure that it could be produced in a competitive way as a new source of protein to aquaculture. To Innovative, it was essential that the production model that we were designing was virtuous. Um, so we have based ourselves on circular economy to create a closed loop model. We are recycling co-products of the agro industry, therefore not uh, impacting resources. And we're also recycling the dejection of the insects as fertilizer for agriculture, therefore functioning in very short loop. Uh, that enables us to have actually minimal, minimal impact on the environment. We have a reduced carbon footprint compared to traditional uh, sources of protein and as well uh, lower impact on natural resources. We also place a very uh, uh, we also are very committed to animal welfare as we develop this new industry. Uh, while there is very little scientific evidence about insects experiencing any kind of pain or suffering, uh, we at Innovative apply the precautionary principle. Um, 
just in case they do. And we uh, have based our approach on Bramble's five freedoms for animals, uh, which uh, basically makes sure that our insects are free from hunger and thirst, they're free from discomfort, they're free from injuries, pain and disease, free from fear and distress, as well as free to express their natural behavior. We have three commitments. Uh, the first one is to ensure that our insects feel at home and we have the optimal environmental conditions uh, that, not, that mimic their natural environment. Uh, we make sure that we look after the health and well-being of our insects through the highest quality of feed, as well as uh, making sure they are not exposed to diseases. And finally, uh, we do everything to provide them a stress-free life, and that comes through minimizing the human interactions, as well as uh, ensuring that the methods we use to harvest them uh, limit uh, the potential suffering of our larvae. We commercialize three products from uh, our insect rearing activity. Two uh, products come from the larvae, uh, so that's the protein part, which we use for agriculture, as well as the oil part, which we commercialize for both piglets and poultry, thanks to its uh, antimicrobial properties. And then finally, we also commercialize the byproducts, which are the dejection of the insects as an organic fertilizer, mainly for organic crops. So, Paolo talked a little bit about the benefits of using insects. Um, we strongly believe that uh, the protein that we produce has benefits across uh, three axes. So first of all, it's a very high quality ingredient for uh, fishes thanks to its high protein content, which has been validated through trials both in R&D stations and at commercial scale. It has a positive impact on health uh, because of the very short life cycle of insects. They do not uh, accumulate any unwanted substances, and our insects are 100% GMO free. Um, on uh, the naturality axis, a lot of the fish in nature actually feed on insects. For instance, trout's uh, diet is made up of insects at 75%. And then finally, we believe there's a strong sustainability benefit, uh, which is uh, enabled by our local production and circular economy model, but also because we're, in a, we're uh, replacing other raw materials and therefore limiting the impact on uh, resources. There's also benefits on the end products. So we've been working both with uh, third-party laboratories as well as with chefs to assess the quality on the flesh of the fish. And uh, we have found that on trout, uh, the feed, including insect meal, enabled a deeper pigmentation of the fillets as well as a more firm and juicier texture. Uh, which were both positive aspects for end consumers, and uh, chefs tend to uh, very much appreciate working with the uh, fish that has been fed with insects. In France, uh, we have launched last year a very special partnership with Auchan Retail, uh, where we actually feed their trout uh, with a diet including insect meal. Um, this has enabled us to, this partnership has enabled us to work with different actors of the value chain, uh, which were pioneers in this uh, initiative. Um, and uh, I highly encourage you to go find out more about this initiative on our website, julianasec.com, uh, where we explain all of the uh, details. Um, and you can find in the store, thanks to the label, the trout that have been fed with, fed with insects. This was a world first. Um, it had never been done before, so we were very proud of this initiative. Currently, Innovative operates a pilot plant in the north of France. Um, this pilot plant is state-of-the-art in terms of zoo technical and industrial know-how. Uh, it is also energy-optimized and zero waste. And it was extremely important for us to ensure the highest quality, safety, and ethical standards from the very beginning. Uh, this is why we partnered with uh, Friends of the Sea and Friends of the Earth, uh, which we got certified uh, last year, uh, because as an infant industry, we want to, uh, from the very start, adhere to the very highest standards. 
As a matter of fact, uh, we are already extended our capacity. Um, we are in the process of building a uh, second plant, which will have a much uh, larger capacity and uh, will be uh, built in industrial science biosis uh, with a partner, Perios, which is a starch producer. Uh, by co-locating our next factory with this starch factory, we can actually use their co-products uh, directly to feed our insects and therefore optimize uh, logistical costs uh, as well as uh, optimize synergies and therefore have uh, the uh, best possible impact on the environment, avoiding up to 25,000 tons of CO2 per year, which is the equivalent of removing 40,000 cars off the road. Uh, but our plans will not stop there. Uh, in order to uh, meet the needs of aquaculture and the other industries that were mentioned by Massimo, uh, we have uh, the plan to extend quite rapidly. Uh, once our pilot plant will be uh, at scale functioning um, in 20, uh, early 2020, we will uh, be launching the construction of five new plants uh, to be operational by 2022, both in Europe and in the US. So feel free to contact us if you have more questions at the email address here, and uh, happy to answer questions today as well. Well, thank you very much, May, and uh, thank you all for uh, listening. Let's see if there are some uh, uh, questions out there. I see the red dot and. Uh, Oh, uh, William asked uh, uh, a question for uh, May. Uh, do you have a regulatory or accreditation system uh, for the residual frass? May, that's for you. Sure. Uh, so frass as uh, other uh, animal um, dejections can be used as an organic fertilizer. Uh, so we have to abide by the same regulation. Because it is a new raw material, uh, the European Commission has uh, um, encouraged different countries to set uh, hygienic, hygienization methods. Uh, so in France, we actually have to compost uh, our frass before we can use it. Uh, but the regulations are still in the process of being made at the European level, so they are bound to evolve over time. So I see another question. I don't know if this is uh, um, something you can answer or uh, it's a bit uh, uh, a strange question. <laughs> uh, no, sir, so we are. We are well, why is Innovafeed working with Barents in pet food industry? Uh, so we, as I mentioned, work with uh, different um, end markets. Uh, we work mainly in aquaculture, uh, but we also uh, have a very successful collaboration with parents on uh, the pet foods for uh, feeding cats and dogs. Could you confirm, uh, another question, could you confirm where insects could be used in Europe? So, uh, insects can... Uh, there are different uh, regulations for different parts of the insect. So uh, the insect protein can be used in aquaculture and in pet food. The insect fat can be used in aquaculture, pet food, as well as poultry and uh, pig feed. Um, and the live insect can also be used across all four uh, markets. Um, once you have the actual sanitary agreement and if you abide by all of the regulation in terms of uh, health and uh, safety, then it can be uh, basically commercialized in any country in Europe. And then we have a question from uh, retail chain. Are you working with any food service or retail operators to use their waste as input? So um, a lot of companies are looking into that. The real challenge uh, with using uh, retail operators' waste is that they vary, very, they vary from uh, one week to the next in quality and in uh, what composes those waste streams, which makes it 
very hard to have an actual uh, constant product and to ensure the quality of the output, which is our protein and our oil. So we have made the choice to use uh, agricultural byproducts, which are also actually waste. They're just a different kind of waste that's a little bit less visible to the general consumer. Um, but that, that way we have no impact on natural resources. And then how, how do you validate the CO2 reduction from the facility in May? Uh, so we have asked an independent third party called iCare to conduct a life cycle analysis. Um, so basically when we use the byproducts of a, our partner agricultural facility, we enable them to, to um, save on energy, which they generally use for uh, treating those byproducts. And uh, therefore, we uh, avoid about 25,000 tons of CO2 emissions per year. And then again, a uh, question for you. When will uh, substantial volumes, more than uh, 100 uh, tons, be available? So, um, as I mentioned, we're currently uh, in the process of building our full-scale plant, which will be operational starting December of this year. Uh, it will have a capacity of 10,000 tons, so it will, uh, the actual capacity will ramp up over the first uh, quarter of uh, 2020. There's a more generic question about uh, Africa, and uh, can you please develop more on insect protein used in Africa where over 300 million people are starving. Um, well, uh, the, the data that we found uh, are showing that, uh, yes, Africa in terms of the diversity of insects which are uh, consumed, eaten, uh, has the highest uh, diversity. Um, and the, uh, one of the highest number of countries which are actually eating insects. Uh, however, uh, from the value statistics, uh, it shows that, uh, uh, for example, compared with Asia, the actual production value is very low. So obviously, there isn't uh, an organized uh, insect farming uh, industry, and uh, it, it would be interesting also to hear from May if there is a possibility in the future to some kind of uh, knowledge transfer uh, in this area to support the development of the industry there too. What do you think, May? Uh, yes, yeah, so there's actually a, a, one of our competitors which is based in uh, South Africa, uh, which has uh, launched a similar project. Um, what we see in Africa is that there's a very strong growth of aquaculture, in particular around tilapia and catfish, and uh, insects could be a, a great source of, uh, of protein for those fish. Uh, enabling to reduce the reliance on fish meal, which currently has to be imported, and due to um, import tax as well as uh, the uh, currency uh, volatility, often uh, has a very high incidence on the cost of feeding uh, fish in Africa. So we're working, we're looking at several projects in Africa as well to, to feed fish and uh, and help produce uh, lower cost and higher quality fish in Africa. Another question uh, for you, May. Uh, you're very busy today. <laughs> uh, uh, could uh, insect farming be used to process all organic wastes universally? Um, so it's a great question. Um, there are other companies uh, that have actually focused on using insects for the purpose of uh, recycling or processing organic waste. Um, it's at the moment a little bit of a different business model because these uh, insects then cannot be used as seed uh, in any um, industry that will go into the human food chain. So as uh, Paolo had shown that slide earlier with uh, the regulations, insects have to be fed today with 100% uh, vegetal um, raw materials. We cannot feed any um, meat to our insects, uh, so that's kind of the barrier. But some companies are focusing solely on uh, the intrinsic value of insects to recycle and process bio-waste. Then there's a question uh, about uh, the 
if you can talk about the financial viability of insect protein, considering it is directly competing with commodity products like uh, fish meal and soy meal. Before the meeting, we spoke a little bit about the fluctuating uh, fish meal prices. Uh, maybe you can uh, elaborate from there, man. So, um, there are um, indeed the the, the, the objective uh, in order to enter the market is to be competitive with these uh, raw materials. At the moment, the main obstacle for that is scale. Uh, so, all of the actors of the insect industry are working at uh, building scale and increasing uh, the production capacity so that we can be competitive. So that is definitely uh, the objective and the target. At the moment, uh, what we have tried to do is to build value chains that enable our partners, which are pioneers, to actually generate more value. So for instance, the partnership we have with Auchan uh, enables to uh, create value for uh, the retailer, which you can then share with the different partners in the value chain. And uh, on our side, uh, as uh, friend of the sea, uh, as we believe that uh, it is a very positive and uh, alternative, beneficial to the environment and lower impact, uh, we are also uh, networking uh, uh, and uh, uh, introducing uh, these new, newly available uh, products uh, to uh, uh, feed producers and also to aquaculture producers as we have uh, specific requirements for uh, feed in our friend of the sea standards and requirements for uh, certification of sustainable aquaculture. So we hope that also gradually uh, this will lead to an increased uh, value and appreciation from the market. I believe that we almost run out of questions. Maybe uh, Last one, is research happening into the omega-3 content uh, of potential insects for culture? Could certain insects provide the omega-3 requirements uh, of marine fish? I think somehow it has been answered, but uh, maybe may you want to ask something? So indeed, in the comparison to fish meal, um, insect meal does not contain any omega-3, which is uh, one of the limitations. However, there are alternative uh, ways of producing omega-3 such as through algae or through some crops um, and uh, there's a lot of research and some great projects that are uh, happening on that topic. Uh, when it comes to actually trying to produce omega-3 through insects, uh, well there is the opportunity to feed insects with omega-3 rich um, feeds such as algae. Um, we have noticed that the insects will only ingest part of it, and therefore a lot of it goes to waste and goes into the digestion. So we have made the choice uh, instead to defat our insect meal so that other sources of omega-3 can be brought to fish feed uh, through the oil uh, fraction of the feed. Well, thank you very much, uh, May, and, uh, and, and thank you, everybody. I'm really glad that this, this webinar has led to uh, such an interest, uh, and uh, we have had uh, almost 100 uh, registrations, and uh, we passed the information to all of you about the webinar. And uh, I want to, I want you to, would like you to save the date for the next webinar, which will be held uh, on the 29th of May, and uh, it's going to be uh, related to sustainable aquaria. Yes, the public aquaria, they can also have an impact on the environment and on some specific species, and they can also be uh, valuable to promote awareness about uh, marine conservation. So recently, Friend of the Sea certified the first uh, uh, sustainable aquarium, the Aqua Rio, in uh, the, the Aquarium Rio, which is the biggest aquarium in South America. More information, you will receive the invitation, and I hope to see you back there again. So. Again, a, a, a great uh, thanks and uh, applause, and thank you very much uh, to May, and uh, thank you to InnovaFeed for this uh, very positive uh, collaboration, and uh, uh, to Massimo for his collaboration and his liaison with the company. Thank you very much. We'll be in touch. 
Uh, my name is May Wall Raven. I'm in charge of business development at InnovaFeed. InnovaFeed is a biotech company which produces ingredients based on insect rearing. We are located in France. Uh, where we operate our pilot factory since 2017. We have uh, reached out to Friends of the Sea to get environmental certification uh, last year. We worked uh, together with the team at Friends of the Sea and Friends of the Earth to come up with new standards for insect production and particularly sustainable insect production. We have uh, obtained the certification late last year. It's very important for InnovaFeed to make sure that we meet the highest possible standards in terms of environment as well as social impacts. So we were very uh, happy to collaborate with Friends of the Earth and Friends of the Sea on this project. We think it will bring a lot of value uh, in the future and look forward to continue working together.